Hello, I'm Christina Hendricks, and in this short video I'll be talking about two versions of the trolley problem by Judith Jarvis Thompson in her article from 1985 called The Trolley Problem. She actually discusses several versions of the problem in her article, but here I'll just be talking about those she calls bystander at the switch and loop. And some of what I say here in this video refers back to an earlier video in this series on Philippa Foote's version of the trolley problem, so you might want to watch that one first. When Philippa Foote wrote about the trolley problem in 1967, her version involved the driver of a runaway trolley who can choose to either let the trolley go on its original track and kill five workers, or to divert the trolley onto another track that has just one worker on it. Foote argued that it is morally acceptable for the driver to choose to kill one instead of five by diverting the trolley. Writing nearly 20 years later, Judith Jarvis Thompson focuses instead on a different problem, which she calls bystander at the switch. In this scenario, a bystander is standing near the junction of the tracks and sees the runaway trolley hurtling toward five people. In the picture on the slide, they're tied to the track, but in Thompson's article, the people on the track are workers who are repairing it. In any case, in Bystander at the Switch, the person watching sees the driver try to put on the brakes, but the brakes fail and the driver faints. The bystander has a choice, though. He is standing next to a switch that can move the trolley from the track with the five people on to the track with the one person. So the question is, is it morally permissible for the bystander to flip the switch, thereby causing the trolley to kill one person instead of letting it go ahead on its path and killing five? Several polls have shown that many people think it is permissible. The first two results on the left are from polls in 2006, and the one on the right reflects what I saw when I engaged in an interactive case study on philosophyexperiments.com. They said that those of those who had also done the case study, 85% said that it's permissible to move the lever and switch the trolley's track. Thompson also stipulates in her article that you may pull the lever and switch the trolley onto a new track. Even if you disagree, let's go with that and see what she argues from there. Now remember that Foote differentiated between the case of the driver of a runaway trolley deciding to switch tracks and kill one person instead of five, and the case of a surgeon who decides to kill a relatively healthy person to use their organs to save five others who would otherwise die very quickly. Foote argued that while the trolley driver may switch tracks and kill one instead of five, the surgeon may not kill the innocent person to save five others. According to Thompson, what explains why the surgeon may not kill the innocent patient and why the trolley driver may nevertheless turn the trolley are these two principles. The surgeon may not kill one to save five because killing one is worse than letting five die. But the trolley driver may turn the trolley, and this is because killing five is worse than killing one. Recall from the first video in this series that for foot, the driver may turn the trolley because she is faced with the choice of violating two negative duties, killing one versus killing five, with no other options available. In that situation, Foote argues, one should choose to do, do the least harm. But here's where the bystander case is different from the trolley driver case. The trolley driver chooses between killing five and killing one. The bystander's choice is between killing one and letting five die. This is because the bystander is not driving the trolley, so if he did nothing, he would not be killing the five. He would instead be letting them die by letting the trolley go on its path. But then this throws a wrench into things, because if it is morally permissible for the bystander to move the lever and turn the trolley, then principle one here no longer holds. If the bystander can flip the switch, then killing one may not be worse than letting five die. And if principle one doesn't hold, then it cannot be used to say why the surgeon may not kill one person instead of letting five others who need organs die. Thus, this principle isn't what explains why the surgeon cannot kill one person to use their organs to save five others, according to Thompson. And that leads to Thompson's main question in her 1985 article called The Trolley Problem. Why is it that the bystander may turn his trolley, though the surgeon may not remove the young man's lungs, kidneys, and heart? One thing you might think could explain the difference is the following. In the transplant case, the surgeon uses the innocent person merely as a means to an end, meaning that person is not treated as a valuable human being, but just as a tool to achieve a goal. The bystander at the switch, though, doesn't use the one person on the other track as a means to achieve an end or a goal. If the person on the other track weren't there at all, the goal could still be achieved. This should sound familiar from the discussion of the principle of double effect in the first video in this series. 
But here, Thompson gives another example of the trolley problem to show that the principle of not using people as mere means to ends won't distinguish between the transplant and the bystander cases. This is the loop example on the right. In the loop situation, if the bystander throws the switch, then the trolley will kill one person, but it will then stop and the five will be saved. In the loop case, the one on the sidetrack is used directly as a means to save the five. If that person weren't there, the five would die. Similarly, if the one patient weren't killed in the transplant case, the five would die. But then Thompson says that in the loop case, the bystander can still flip the switch. This is because, as she puts it, we really cannot suppose that the presence or absence of that extra bit of track makes a moral difference. And so if the bystander can flip the switch without the loop on the left, he can do so with the loop as well, according to Thompson. What does this mean if she's right? It means that we still don't have an answer as to what differentiates the bystander case from the transplant case. The bystander in the loop example and the surgeon in the transplant case can both be said to be using people merely as means to ends. And yet, according to Thompson, the bystander next to the loop may flip the switch and turn the trolley, but the surgeon may not operate. And thus we're back at the same question. Thompson spends the rest of her article trying to explain why it is that the bystander can turn the trolley, but the surgeon cannot operate.